finally, uh, by way of application, I have two, two points. The first is this. Believe God. Believe God. Hear, hear God's word and believe it. Believe that God actually loves you like he says he does. And the reason I, I call your attention to this is because I think that uh, sometimes, sometimes we think God is most glorified in our great acts of service for him. It, it, we think, if only I were more bold in evangelism, if only I had the faith to sell everything and move to Africa as a missionary, uh, if only I had faith like the apostles to cast out demons, to heal the sick, the lame, the blind, and the deaf. Um, and, and I am persuaded that more God-glorifying than any of that is just to sit where you are in the pew and to look into the mirror of God's word at who he is and who you are and to actually believe that he loves you as much as he says he does. You know, remember uh, in, in Matthew 17, Jesus' disciples, they, they fail to cast out a demon from a, a man's son. And uh, the man says, Lord, have mercy on my son. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? He, he, he's just discouraged by the lack of faith of the disciples. Uh, then the disciples said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. So Jesus says, it takes faith like a mustard seed to do great acts of service for God. But remember the Canaanite woman uh, who had a demon-possessed daughter, a Gentile woman, that she came to Jesus imploring him, heal my daughter. And at first, Jesus didn't answer her. And, and then he says to her, eventually, I came not except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but she, but she continued to ask. And then Jesus said, it is not good to take the children's bread and uh, give it to the little dogs. And in the midst of all of that, of being told, I didn't come for you. She knew it. She said, yes, Lord. I know that I do not deserve it. I know who I am. But she said, but even little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. In other words, yes, I know I don't deserve it, but I believe that your grace is so great, so abundant, that surely it will abound even to me. And Jesus looked at her and said, O oh woman, great is your faith. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Just, just dwell on that. Great faith is not doing great things for God. It is believing that he really is great enough to love us in spite of us as we are. Secondly, rejoice. Believe God and rejoice. Verse 11, Paul says, And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. In other words, Paul says, We rejoice in God for who he is, because God has shown himself through, his, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the visible image of the invisible God, he has revealed who God is to us, that God is love. And his grace has abounded to us, 
And in Christ, we who have sinned against him and deserve nothing but condemnation can have everlasting life. How could we respond in any way other than rejoicing? How could we not rejoice? And is your life marked by joy? Are you a joyful person? Do you have a joy that surpasses and goes beyond whatever your present circumstances are? Or do you have, or do you allow petty circumstances to take away your joy? Do you get frustrated with people over little things? Do you become depressed just because you can't have what you want? You or your life is uncomfortable, or you didn't perform well enough for your job? Do you allow just everyday life to take your joy? Or do you remind yourself of the gospel, that God, who created everything, that he loves you, that he sent his son to die for you, and that one day you will be with him for eternal glory? Do you remind yourself of that? And, and take heart and just rejoice. God is glorified in our rejoicing. And I, I, I just want to clarify, you know, I, I don't mean by that that we should have some kind of flippant happiness, uh, you know, that it is never right to grieve or sorrow. You know, Paul talks about right there before this passage, and not only that, but we also rejoice in tribulations. And when ch your child dies, your, your spouse passes away, when uh, you fall into a great sin, there are times in life that it is right to have grief and it is right to have sorrow. But in the midst of it, in the midst of it, remember the gospel. Uh, as Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, you know, we are to grieve but not as those who have no hope. Rejoice in the midst of tribulation because you remember the gospel, that God loves you. That tribulation is not a sign that he has forsaken you, but it is an opportunity to draw closer to him and to glorify him through your faith in that which is to come. And so just in conclusion, take heart. Our hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us because God has sent his son for us to save us.